Hi everyone, it's Miss Kelly here. Today I'm going to talk you through some of the basic numeracy skills that you need to do well in biology. The first one we're going to talk about is averages. Now, I think the averages are super, super easy. Um, once you know the formula, once you know how to do them, you can do any average question that's thrown at you in biology. So I've put a little description of what an average is. An average um, is a number expressing the central or typical value in a set of data. Now, in maths, there are different types of averages that you may hear about. However, in biology, when we're speaking about an average, we are always referring to the mean. Okay, always referring to the mean. So no matter what you see about um, in the question, when it's asking you to calculate an average, that's always what we're talking about. Just put a little simple, a simple method section there for you. So you add up all the numbers and divide by how many numbers you have. So let's try a little example. This one is um, to calculate the average height of all these pupils. So we have Chloe, David, Lauren, Nicola, Rebecca and Ross and all their heights. So you'll see at the side there, I've just done my working. So I've added up all the numbers and when I added them up, it got 985. We have six numbers here representing the six pupils. So I take the number and I divide it by six and that gives us 164.17 centimetres. Always, always, always remember your units. Um, in terms of rounding in biology, we're not too precious about our rounding, to be honest, unless it says something specific in the question. Um, so a general rule is just to go to two significant figures, keeps it nice and neat for you. Another example, calculate the average energy content in the fruit bowl. So type of fruit or veg and the energy content in kilojoules per 100 grams. So I've taken the 17, 21, 50. 86 and 41 and I've added them all up to get 215 and this time I have um, five numbers in my data set so I've taken the 215 and I have um, divided it by five which has given me 43. Again remember your units it's not just 43 what you're representing there is the average energy content so it's 43 um, kilojoules per 100 grams. Next I'm going to talk to you about ratios. Now, people find ratios quite tricky when they first start them, but the more you practice, just like anything, the better you get. And hopefully when we're going through these examples, you'll see it's the same thing that's applied every single time. Every time you do a ratio, no matter if there's two numbers in the ratio or three or four, you're doing the exact same thing every time. So the more you practice, the more confident you'll get. Ratios are used to compare the proportions of two or more items. So in biology, a ratio must always be written as a whole number. So that just means there can't be um, any remainders there. So you can't have anything like 2.4 or 5.1, um, no um, decimals there at all. The method, so when you're comparing two things, we'll stick with two things to keep it simple. Um, you need to find the largest number that will divide into both sides of the ratio with no remainders. So let's have a look at one got an example of um, genetic modification. So it says in the USA, 95% um, of the um, corn grown has been genetically modified. Calculate GM plants grown to non-GM plants grown as a simple whole number ratio. That part of the end, you'll always see that in a ratio question in our subject as a simple whole number ratio. And that just means again, can't have any decimals in it. So I've put what we're trying to work out here so, so we're really, really clear. We're working out GM corn to non-GM corn. Now it's told us in the question that there's 95% of the corn grown has been genetically modified, which leaves the rest that's not been genetically modified. So we've put that as um, five. So we're trying to compare 95 to five. Now I need to find the biggest number that's gonna divide into both of these. A general rule for ratios and the most important one, whatever you do to one side of the ratio, you have to do it to the other. So for example, if I divide 95 by five, I've got to try and divide five by five. And in this case, that gives us our answer 19 to one. You don't need to worry about any units or anything with ratios. We're just looking for the simple whole number ratio at the end. This one's a little bit trickier. So calculate as a simple whole number ratio the amylase content at five minutes to 10 minutes. So we've got um, a table here with amylase content, um, units per liter, and we've got all the times. So it's asking you to look at the amylase content at five minutes, which is 4.9. 
and compare that to the amylase content at 10 minutes, which is 3.5. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't know a number very, very easily that can divide into 4.9 and 3.5. That is just unnecessarily tricky. So how to make that easier, make it into a whole number, make it into an easier number for you to work with. How we would do that is times by 10. So if I times 4.9 by 10, I get 49. And if I times 3.5 by 10, I get 35. And that just gives you much easier numbers to work with. Um, and then we do the simple rule of ratios. We're trying to find the largest number that will divide into both of these numbers. So let's try seven. We get 49, we divide it by seven and get seven. We take 35 and divide that by seven, we get five. No remainders, no decimals in that answer. And there's no number here that's gonna go into both seven and five. So you know that you've simplified it down as much as you can. Every single time you see a ratio question, that's what you're trying to do. Percentages. So percentages are a really, really common question, sometimes as part of a bigger picture for a numeracy question in biology. Um, so let's look at what they are. A percentage is a number expressed as a fraction of 100. And what you do to work out a percentage is you take the number that you want to find the percentage for, divide by the total and times by 100. Now that might look a little bit complicated, but let's break it down into something that we've all done. Trying to work out what percentage you got on a test. Okay, it's always what you guys ask me when I give you your biology results back. You always say, miss, what's that as a percentage? This is how to do it. So say you did very, very well and you scored 48 out of 50 in your most recent biology test. Calculate this mark as a percentage. All you're wanting to do there is take what you scored, so 48, and divide it by what the test was out of, which was 50. Now that gives you 0 0.96. That doesn't look like a percentage to me. What we've got to do is times it by 100 and you get 96%. And that's the same for anything else that you're trying to work out the percentage for. You just always have to remember to times it by 100 at the end there. Percentage changes. Now, when we teach the biology part of our second year course, all the way up to if you choose advanced higher in biology, there's always percentage changes. Okay, it's a classic assessment question. So we want to make sure that you're prepared for that. They're really, really simple. There's one um, formula to follow difference over original times 100 and if you can remember that and repeat it over and over and over again and use it a couple of times in a couple of different contexts it should become fairly straightforward difference and you divide that by the original times by 100 so let's try one this is an example question i think this is from the 2014 past paper the weight of a hen's egg when it's laid is 50 grams when it hatches, it will weigh 43 grams. Calculate the percentage um, decrease in the egg weight after it is laid. So what I've done is I've just set out what should be going on in your head when you're looking at these questions. You have um, the difference. So that's the first part of our wee equation. And the difference is seven. How we work that out is we take the smallest number away from the biggest number in um, your question. So this, in this case, it was 50, take away 43. We need to find the original number to complete our equation. And the original number here is 50 because that was the original weight that the hen's egg was before um, it went down. Okay, so if we plug these into our, um, our formula, difference is seven divided by 50 gives us 0 0.14. Always remember the brackets are around that for a reason. Always remember if you're putting it into your calculator, work out what that is before you times it by 100. Because see if you don't, you don't get the right answer and um, the formula gets messed up. Okay, so you just need to make sure um, that you are pressing um, the equals button before you times it by 100. So we've got 0 0.14, we times that by 100 and that gives us 14%. Calculate the percentage decrease in the egg weight after it was laid of 14% um, decrease. Always remember your units. It's not just 14, it's 14%. And it's really good practice to just get into whether it's an increase or a decrease, just writing that um, as part of your answer, just to be super clear that you do know what you're talking about. Okay, we'll do one the other way. Um, Aidan's height was 150 centimetres in S2 and 175 centimetres in S3. Calculate the percentage increase in Aidan's height. 
So just like before, we've got to work out the difference. So we take the smallest number away from the biggest, which gives us 25. The original number was 150. Now, because this is a percentage increase, the original number had to be the smallest number we're working with, didn't it? Because otherwise the height wouldn't have increased. Um, so when we plug that into our formula, 25 divided by 150 gives us 0 0.16. Then we times it by 100. Again, always remembering your units. The last part I'm going to talk to you guys today about is graphs. Now, graphs in biology um, are worth a huge, huge proportion um, of marks in any assessment. Okay, and there are two types of graphs typically that we look at, bar graphs and line graphs. So I'll talk you through how to know the difference of when to use each one and then some um, general rules for that apply to both of them. So when we've got a bar graph or when we've got a data set that we know we need to use a bar graph for, it's because the data set or um, in a question they may present you with um, a table of results, we know that that table contains numbers and words. So we need to use a bar graph. If your data set only contains numbers, we've got to use a line graph. So for example, if it was um, pupil name and their height, then that would be numbers and words. So we'd use a bar graph. If the table had temperature in degrees Celsius and um, time in minutes, then that would be two sets of numbers that we have. So we would use a line graph. So that's just a general, really, really easy rule, but it means that you're not going to plot um, your data set in the wrong type of graph. The part in blue is a method for both. So these are what you have to do, no matter if it's a bar or a line graph you're trying to draw, you have to do these steps. So decide which figures will go along the bottom. The bottom axis, the horizontal one going along the way, also known as the X axis, and you've got to decide which will go up the side. Now that's the vertical part going up and down and that's known as the Y axis. Now I can't speak for other subjects, but in um, biology, usually the figures in the first column of the table go along the bottom of your graph, go along the X axis, because that's usually the independent um, variable. Okay, so that's that's quite a nice way just to make sure that you're doing it correctly. In our subject anyway, the first column of your table of results is usually the data set that you plot along the bottom. So if it's a bar graph, that's usually the words that you're putting along the bottom. If it's a line graph, then make sure you're, you are um, picking the right set of numbers that you're going to plot along the bottom. The single most important part here is deciding on your scale. Now, a scale goes from zero always in biology we always start at zero that may be different in other sciences or in maths you just have to remember in biology we always start at zero and you need to find the highest number that you're trying to plot so if your table goes all the way from zero to 150 you're going to have to find some numbers and your scale that you can plot um in between those you have to go up in an even scale remember so if I'm going from zero to 150 I could go up in fives or tens or twenties pick something are numbers that are simple to work with. Don't try to go up in 3.7s or something. You'll just make your life harder. Pick ones that are nice and easy. So fives or tens or twos or twenties or a hundreds, depending on what your data set is. Now I've put there, do not miss any numbers out. If you're going from, let's stick to zero to 150, you can't go zero, five, 10, 11, 12, 15, 20, 25. You can't you can't have um, uneven points in that scale. You've got to make sure you're going up um, in nice spread out um, points up the axes. Okay, so we'll start with a bar graph example. On the grid below, this would be what the question was. So in the question, you would get a table, like the one um, right there that says type of insects and number of them. So the question would say on the grid below, draw the graph that shows the different numbers of insects found in the ecosystem. So we've got the types of insects, ant, beetle, um, aphid and ladybird, and the number that were found in the ecosystem. Now I can see here that there are numbers and words, so I know I've got to draw a bar graph. So the type of insects, the first um, column in the table would go along the bottom, ant, beetle, aphid, ladybird and the number of insects up the side. The highest number I've got to get to here is 21. So I've just chosen to go up in five, starting from zero. Zero, five, 10, 15, 20, 25. Okay, and then you draw the bars. They should be the same width, the same um, 
spacing apart and always, always, always use a ruler. No matter what kind of graph you're drawing, no matter if you think you're really great at drawing straight lines, you can get marks taken off you, even if you go out of that line even slightly. So always use um, a ruler when you're drawing graphs. The next thing that you'll get the mark for here is labeling of your axes. So that means putting in the table headings somewhere into your graph. So number of insects is an axis label and type of insects are axis label. Um, you don't have to come up with new axis labels, just pick the headings of your table and copy them onto um, the graph on the right side, whether it's the X axis or the Y axis. Okay, because if not, someone looking at that would know, yeah, they would know their types of insects probably, but the 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, what, what is that meant to mean? You need, need to be really, really clear and explain to the person reading your graph what those numbers represent. And finally, we've got line graphs. So the question would be on the grid below, draw a graph that shows time taken for um, bubbles to form in a test tube at four different temperatures. Now notice that it doesn't tell you necessarily in the question that you've got to draw a bar or a line graph. So how we know that is we've got our um, table here, temperature and their numbers, and time taken for bubbles to form in seconds, they're also numbers. So I know I've got to draw a line graph. Temperature is the first um, column in the table. So I'm gonna put that along the bottom, starting at zero. I've chosen to go up in um, an even scale, zero, five, 10, 15, 20, and so on. And then up the Y axis, zero to 120. Okay. Now in biology, we plot the points. Okay, so you plot the points, just you can do tiny little X's or little dots, whatever is gonna be easier for you to um, easier for you to read. And then we get a ruler and we join the dots. We don't do a line of best fit in biology. You will not get marks if you try and do a line of best fit. We join the dots, really, really simple. Um, and making sure again, that you're always, always, always using a ruler. The last thing to check, have I labeled my axes? Again, you don't have to come up with your own axis labels. Just take them straight out the headings um, of the data set table that you were given in the question and you're putting them in the right parts. Because again, if you didn't have them, imagine you were looking at this and you had 0, 5, 10, 15, 20 along the bottom and then going up in 20s along the sides, you wouldn't know what those numbers meant. So putting the axis labels, just make sure that whoever's reading it is really clear about what they're reading. One last thing I want to show you, the bottom part here where we see the two um, zeros, that's exactly how we would want it written in our subject. Okay, you can't do um, a, um, a common zero, which I know you sometimes can do in other subjects, but in biology, we would not accept that as correct because we would see that as one of the scales not having a zero at it, basically. So we need to make sure that when um, we're doing a line graph and both of the scales start at zero, that we're including that. So that part right there, that's how we would want it to be. Okay, I hope that's been helpful. Um, and I hope that you can use this whenever you're doing um, homework or classwork um, that requires you to have some numeracy in it. If there's anything else that we can offer you up in biology, then please come and see us. We've got lots of numeracy resources, um, numeracy booklets complete with marking schemes and loads and loads of practice questions. So please just come and ask. Okay, thank you so much.